Hey guys, it's Carlos EDC, and today I shot a podcast with my buddy Ganda EDC. He's a prolific maker. Uh, he's making pocket prize, he's making hangs, he's making hang stands, pen stands, he's making a uh, friction folder now. And so, you know, we talk a little bit about that, and we also talk about just EDC in general, and we check out his pocket dump. So, I've been making hangs. You have? No, Dude, I've been making hacks. So last no. time we talked about on the podcast, I wasn't making anything, but I got inspired by you and Stephanie and PD Hanks uh, on like just making stuff. And so I just started doing it on Christmas. That's awesome. I know I've seen your stuff. They're they're pretty sweet hanks. I like some Christmas, uh, some Christmas, yeah, hanks, and it just kind of worked out. It just evolved into something. It was dope. Well, yeah, it's like um, you're so into the EDC thing and like you're like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of cool if like I made my own thing and then you can yeah, like, make like it your own you want it. Yeah. yeah. Like even if I stopped right now, it would have all been worth it. Yeah. If oh, I sure. stopped right now, like it would have all been like people out there have something that I made and people out there are enjoying it. And I, I think that's worth it. Exactly. It's like, you're like, you can tell, you know, tell your kids like, yeah, there's that one time I had my entrepreneur phase. Yeah. You know, I did this little Hank thing. Ah. It's like, I was in a rock band when I was in high school. It was horrible and all that stuff. But you know what? I can tell my kids I was in a band. That's all that matters. (laughs) That's the new entrepreneur. (laughs) Like back in the day, I was in a band. Now it's like, oh, I was an entrepreneur, you know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, that's really cool. I, I, I've seen your, the Hanks are awesome. And you had the trays. And yeah. then that those like Thor hammers. Oh, I'm I'll, I'll always make those. Those are uh, super cool. Oh my, I, I that is the thing I have enjoyed the most, and I use mine every day now. There's not a thing I don't make that I don't use it in, on anymore. Like I was building, uh, I'm having a baby pretty soon, baby girl. I, oh I, I, yeah, we were talking about it last. How many yeah. how many weeks until uh, Dude, the six weeks. No way! That's yeah. awesome. Six weeks. I'm almost the dead. Ooh. I'm super excited, super happy about it. And I was building something from IKEA, and I just used my mallet for all the pegs and all that. Nice. I even used wood glue in all the little pegs because it would just make it so much more uh, sturdier. Yeah. And uh, it did, dude. I, I I used to square my mallet in wood glue, and <laughs> it was like higher end IKEA now. <laughs> Oh man, hey. Because my you know, desk is like, yeah, and it's a little wobbly. Yeah. And it's no longer square. So yeah. <laughs> hey, IKEA's not horrible. You know, we I actually put a dresser together for my oldest. Uh, it was an IKEA one. Yeah. I splurged though. I get the I got the non-particle board version. So you know, the, the solid one. Mm-hmm. She's worth Fancy. it. Fancy. Fancy. <laughs> yeah, I saw you uh packing stuff away with your daughter once, and I'm like, man, that's like, is that gonna be me someday? I'm gonna be packing <laughs> yeah. things with my daughter. I'm like, whoa, like blew my mind for a second. Everything blows my mind for, for a second now. Like everything. Oh. Dude, just wait, man. So many fun firsts. Uh, uh, like, yeah, insane. I, uh, I'm I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm really excited. It's good. Just get, uh, get some sleep. That's my only recommendation to everyone is like, just sleep while you can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably going to take some time off of work when she's born. Nice. And, um, <laughs> my dog is always causing a ruckus. She's on every video I make now. Like, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a thing. I'm shooting a video of me making some Japanese uh, saw horses. Mm-hmm. And it's basically two pieces of two by four and a piece of two by six. It's nothing special. Yeah. But, but I was just shooting a video and like, she's, she's in there just causing a racket, grabbing the wood <laughs> with her mouth and like <laughs> biting into it. Oh, that's funny. Uh, but yeah, they tell me she's gonna, she's gonna basically get the press from the babies. But I'm like, what are you talking about? They're gonna be best friends. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've got cats. I mean, it's not a dog, but like they all get along. It's different though. I mean, dogs are like, ne- they're more needy. They want the love. The cats are just kind of like, you know, you can pet me for like 38 seconds and I'm going to bite you. <laughs> now my dog is, is, she's a baby with me. She doesn't like yeah. anybody else, but she'll, she'll lay down on my lap for 30 minutes. Oh, nice, anything. nice. Yeah, she's, she's crazy. Well, good. You'll have dog in the lap and, you know, baby on the shoulder. You'll be fine. I got big shoulders. <laughs> yeah, boom. And I got big arms. They fit. <laughs> they fit. I got all the love. 
Dude, it doesn't matter how strong you are to hold a child in your arm like this for like an hour and a half. Like you're going to get tired. You got to build that, that dad endurance. That dad endurance. That's what it yeah. is. That dad, dad strength. So I saw of your newer designs, you got a mini traveler now. I do. Yeah. It was actually, uh, one of my customers was like, dude, it'd be sweet if you had a mini traveler. And I was like, it would be sweet if I had a mini traveler. I was like, how, how many is it though? It's, uh, it's like three inches. Mm. So mm. I don't know. Well, I don't think I have one near me. It's like uh, about an inch shorter than the main, uh, the full size one. So the full size one is more like a midi. You should make a large one now. Oh jeez, the two handed traveler, like a Fuck yeah. the, <laughs> well, the I don't know. <laughs> see, the problem though is you know the the whole traveler thing is if you uh, I got it where if like the TSA takes it from you, I'll replace it. I think it's like six inches. I forgot what the limit is. There's oh, a limit okay. on tool length you can bring on an airplane. Like you can't yeah. bring like a long screwdriver so i think it's six mm. inches so i could make it like five and a half but if it's it i know you make rare ones you would replace a rare one with like a vanilla one or how would you handle that i don't know honestly not one has been confiscated yet so i you know i'm still good but if yeah. it did i'd either like it kind of depends on what it was if it was something i could make again i'd just make it again like it was like a, one of the coatings or something Mm, okay. yeah, or yeah replace because i know else. sometimes you like do brass you've done titanium i i've been looking at them i've been eyeing them a lot oh yeah well i keep the brass and the titanium in stock the i try to at least the the titanium's out the but it's yeah it's like the the fancy coatings and and those kind of things i'll do like you know five or ten at a time mm -hmm. yeah but yeah I, hey fingers crossed i need to get one I, all my money's been going to either tools or material and stuff so <laughs> Like even my own personal capital, it's been it's been leaving my pockets for Belcher and Co. Or or little things for like the baby and stuff. Oh yeah, dude, so, kids, man. But I've I been eyeing I've that. been eyeing your website for the longest. When you start making pen holders, I'm like, if I make a a pen holder myself, is this like copying? Would he feel bad? Would I feel bad, yeah, dude? Like who would feel wood? that? Because I would make it out of like I don't like just wood. I like I like uh like butcher board style where it's like two different pieces mm, or three okay. or four. Yeah. Uh, this one's um, African mahogany and walnut with some epoxy resin, and I'm doing a a bow tie inlay later. Uh, so I would do yeah. This is badass, by the way. I'm super proud of this. <laughs> it is, it's, it's not finished cool. or anything. Like you know when you finish it, like the grain pops and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, this is gonna be. I'm really, I'm, I'm gonna be really proud of that one. With I, for I, I'll send you my design. You can, you can make it out of wood. We'll call it a collab. No, no, no. Thing. I don't. Uh, your design is cool, but it'd be too complicated in wood. I've seen some cool ones on Instagram, but again, I'd like to make it out of like laminated stuff. So like, the bottom would be maple, and the top would be walnut, or Ooh. or like, so like something like that. Up. Like it like would a, layer up. Like almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be awesome. But not not too tall, you know, because yeah. it still has to fit. My favorite pen, and it's what I sign all my cards with, are like Twisby Ecos. So it'd probably be designed for a uh, Twisby. I mean, other pens would fit, but it'd yeah. probably be like this tall. So that's, Yeah, so it could stick in there. So that's like two and a quarter inches. So it'd be maybe three different woods would be dope. Like uh, maybe go from light to darker. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I love that pen stuff. I actually oh, I like, thought about making the pen holder and then the hank holders in like aluminum, get them machined out. Yeah. They're kind I of know, pricey if I did it. Yeah. But it, I think it'd be sweet. Karis Pen Company makes a pen holder where it's just a block of aluminum. I mean, it's yeah. chamfered beautifully and they have to machine it out and they yeah. do a beautiful job at it. But it's it's a pricey pen holder. Yeah. I mean, because I, when I looked it up, if I made the Hank holder out of aluminum, I think I'd have to make it like 50 bucks or something like that. I'm sure the, yeah. if I did the pen holder, it'd probably be like at least 75 or 100. Yeah. I mean, be, if I did the same design, because it's like three or four inches tall. By like, oh, yeah, I hear it takes yeah. you like 20 hours to print one out of plastic. It's, it's, it's only 18. It's only 18 hours. That's like 20. <laughs> I know. I set it up at night. I make sure it's like get started and it's good. I'll go to bed. I wake up and I, you know, it's like this tall. I'm like, oh, I'm like halfway done. That's funny. So are you going to upgrade that pretty soon? Your 3D printer? I don't know. I've been like you, I've been just buying stuff left and right, whether yeah. it's new knives or I bought another um, vibratory deburr. Uh, there's so like, I'm like, uh, maybe. Cause it's like, do I buy another one of the same one and have kind of like two okay ones or do I like get like a nice one? Yeah. I don't know. Hard, huh? Yeah. 
I haven't bought any knives in a long time. Uh, friends have sent me some stuff, though, which is funny because they didn't talk to each other, but they both sent PM2s. So <laughs> Knife Addicts Anonymous, along with other uh, YouTubers and friends, like yeah. joined together and bought me a knife. That's so, awesome. It was like a new dad gift kind of thing that they did, which was awesome of them. And then another friend sent me another PM2, uh, Maximet, which I've been carrying to work every day. Um, but I haven't bought a knife in a long time. This is the one that they, the, the, they joined up and sent. It was like, oh, yeah. Well, didn't you? You had one like that, right? With the same Oh, so, yeah. I lost it. And that's what yeah, they bought. Yeah, they built that. this one. I mean, this is extra. Like, this carbon fiber scales, blue hardware. Like, they went that's, that's balls to the wall. And, I got. Uh, yeah. Super cool of them. The, the most recent knife. Probably, yeah. The most recent one. I got the new uh, bug out. The, oh, okay. the, the S90V one with the carbon fiber. I just love the bug out. So it came out with, they came out with this fancy one. I was How like, many bug outs do you have now? It's only just one. Two? I actually, so oh, I, just one? I sold my full size normal bug out and then I sold my mini bug out that had titanium scales. And then that, that was about the price of this. So I call it even. Mm. Yeah. I, I didn't see them on Instagram or nothing. That's weird. No, I usually I'll sell my stuff on Reddit. on like a uh, knife swap. It, dude, it's like, it's insane how fast it sells. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Reddit for the win. Reddit for the win for sure. Reddit for the win. I, yeah. I don't even know how Reddit works. It's no, weird. Like, if you like someone was like, oh, cool, I'll go try to sell my knife there. Like, people will yell at you. Oh, you put your link in wrong. Why did you ask for this? Yeah, there, there's like very specific rules. But if you no, follow sure. them, there's enough people on there that, yeah, the knives go pretty quick as long as you don't, you know, charge a well, I guess Instagram, you know, things sell there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I've, I don't know if I've put, maybe I put some like flashlights before on Instagram, but yeah, usually knives and stuff I'll sell on, uh, on Reddit. What, what are you carrying today? So the bug out. This nice. beauty, this fine. It's S90V yeah. carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I carry hardware. This like a lot now. It's like, it's like my old bug out, but just better. <laughs> That's, um, the titanium executive. So, oh, do you have any of those left? Yeah, yeah. On your got, website. Got... Yep. No. Oh. And the my Okluma flashlight. Yeah, that thing you love, huh? Yeah, I like this is like my baby. Like honestly, that like all my other fancy cool. flashlights, I'm like I don't even need them anymore. I can no. just keep one. That's dope. I yeah. like when gear works out like that. Like, um, like I would review pants every now and then, and then when I yeah. got the Twisby, I was like. I think I just became a collector. I think I want more Twispies. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. and I've only have two now, but I, I want, I want the concrete looking one. I want, I want all of them. Not all of them, but like, I want all the colors that like uh, speak to me. Yeah, exactly. Well, see, then you make your your awesome pen holder out of wood, and then like no. you, wood, you got these beautiful pens. I'm excited, dude. Resin. Re Ooh. Resin. I've been dyeing my resin black, but I've been trying to leave a lot of dye out mm -hmm. and not mixing it well. So that way it looks a lot more like glass. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking, ooh, it's gonna be good. It'd be cool. I mean, I like, I love, I like being organized in general, but like organizing my gear is just like, that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's gonna be good. Yeah. I wonder if I have a flashlight here. I'm, I'll be back. I'm disappointed in you that you don't have six readily available. It's hard. It's hard to show on camera what I'm talking about, but like you can see right through this black epoxy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, you know? but it's hard to it. see because of the of the camera and stuff. But like, yeah, once. Once you buff it out and uh, finish it, it looks like black glass. It's going to be dope. Oh, that's cool. So I'm thinking those something like that for my uh, Eco Twisby pen holder. Oh, yeah. those The resin stuff people do is crazy. Insane. It's so expensive, though. It Holy is? crap, it's expensive. Like, walnut is really expensive. Like, this piece alone is, is like, pricey already. I don't know. I don't know. I remember how much it was. But, yeah. It was – it's, like – yeah, it's like sixteen dollars a foot. Dang, I had a friend who um, <laughs> for what? 
<laughs> yeah, for just normal wood, not like finished wood. <laughs> yeah, it's just a piece of wood. You still have to like, um, cause it's not like you buy at Home Depot. You still have to flatten it and stuff. Yeah, exactly. No, I had a buddy who's into that kind of stuff. He built himself like a, like, I don't know, like a sofa table. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, that's really nice, dude. Like, good work. I was like, how much? How much you know, did it cost you? It's like, it was like two fifty. I was like, for the materials. He's like, yeah. No, I got like, and he's like you. He explains all the wood and all these fancy things about yeah. it. I'm, well, you can just go buy one. He's like, yeah, but you can't get blah, 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 wood. And all you these can, other yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it looked awesome, so. Yeah, yeah. and and it, most things now are built like crap. Like oh, you yeah, buy yeah. a chair and it's wobbly within a week. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're a big boy like me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? Uh, 5'10". 5'10". So yeah. you're you're pretty heavy. You're, I'm like, you're like, like Peter you're Totter like 200. 205. Yeah. No, nah, I I'm usually like 198, 200 ish. I was uh I've been 175 like my whole life, and then when I got into the powerlifting thing, I gained like 25 pounds, and then I'm like, okay, this is probably appropriate. <laughs> <Yeah>. Appropriate, <laughs> appropriate. Yeah. for an American. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is an American appropriate size. It's American appropriate. Yeah. What were we talking kidding. about? Oh, chairs. Yeah, like you know what I'm talking about. Like you buy a chair, and within a week they're all wobbly. There's oh, not yeah. a single chair I own that isn't wobbly. We just got new chairs that actually for our dining room table and they're they're welded extrusions. They came as a solid piece. It's awesome. Okay. That might, those might not get wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> they're either just going to they're going to fail. It's like you're sitting on it and then the weld breaks. Mm, it's pretty hard yeah. for a weld to break. Yeah, they're pretty they're pretty nifty. They kind of look like, you know, um like in a TV show when they like bring the metal chair in like the police station and they're interrogating someone. Yeah. It's like one of those. Oh, that's dope. Like yeah. pretty postmodern stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I, like that. I don't I I'd pick none of those things. I wouldn't have thought yeah. I would have thought of you as a postmodern uh I guy. Like, if like if I live by myself, my house would probably be made of like concrete and glass and like it would be like weirdly sterile. Yeah, that's postmodern. Yeah. But like yeah. you know, my wife likes a little hominess to things, which is probably for the better. <laughs> we would still live in caves if it wasn't for women. <laughs> i know seriously i'm like always so hard pressed to like buy new things like like the chair i'm sitting in is like some old chair that we've had forever my I'm wife like... begged me to for her to buy me pants <laughs> i'm like i can buy pants and she's like well buy pants i'm like i'm not gonna buy pants those pants, pants are good. fine she's like they have a hole right in the butt i'm like so people can't see it <laughs> i'm a construction worker so you know so you're working. Some, of my, yeah. some of my pants are gonna have holes in them it's exactly. just fine She's like, no, I'm buying your pants. I'm like, fine, buy me pants, but buy me like some manly pants for work. Yeah, I don't want those pre-ripped jeans. That, those just drive me crazy. No. Like, no, I, I want to rip my own jeans doing stuff. That's the only okay. way. Exactly, exactly. So any designs you're working on currently? Um, uh, probably the, the thing I've been going back and forth the most on recently was the, my folder knife, the friction folder. Oh, yeah, so actually I, I found a new tool shop uh another domestic shop that i could use they're the ones who made the uh they they want they water cut the executives for me um so i was like okay they're pretty good i like it so then they're actually making a, a prototype of the knife so they're gonna make the scales one set of scales and one set of the blade so i'll get that in and then and then you'd have to find washers and stuff. Yeah, well, I already got all the washers figured out because I needed to like figure out the spacing for the design, and I've got pins and the um, you know all that you know the screws and everything. So I've got all the hardware. Wow. Yeah, I just need the pieces, and then I gotta find a good heat treater. So I gotta figure that out. Too. What metal are you gonna be using? I don't know. I th- well, you do any pre-orders? I don't know. See, so like I work in manufacturing. What do you know? Day. What do you know? <laughs> Senor Gondic, I, I kind of figure know? it out as I go. I, I like, I work in manufacturing and everything's like, you know, got to get it done, blah, blah, blah. So I like my side business to be super chill. So like, yeah. I'll go buy 25, 50 of them. And then, you know, just kind of be like, when they get in, they get in and I'll sell them. Because yeah. there's been times where I'll do the pre-order thing and like, you know, something doesn't work right or there's a delay. And then I got to email all these people. Usually they're pretty cool about it, but. That's been my ethos within, you know, Beltran Co. as well. Yeah, it's like... Like, if I don't like it, I don't want to make it. And if I don't like making it, I don't want to make it. (laughs) Exactly. I have to like like it and I have to like making it. 
So yeah. that's why, uh, uh, like the trays, I, I need to figure out a different way to make my trays because uh, I love the trays, but yeah. making them has become a bigger pain in the butt than, uh, yeah. So I have to redesign it. What it is right now is just the butcher board and then I write out the middle part, you know? Mm -hmm. so it's just the butcher board that I yeah. make. You know, I grab the walnut, grab the mahogany and I make a butcher board. Then I do the juice, the juice groove and then I, I write out the inside. The part of routing out the inside is the part I don't like doing. Uh, it just takes so long. You got to cut an eighth of an inch at a time to make a tray, you know? So it takes a while. But I do fucking love them. I, I want one. <laughs> I have one, but I want one. I, I want like two more maybe. Like one for keys to leave by the front door. Ooh, yeah. So you just throw your keys in a badass tray. And yeah. like the keys and the oils are going to make the, the patina of the wood super oh, nice cool eventually. Dance. Oh, my Ooh. God. It's going to be nice. And yeah. then I want one by my bed. And I want one here on my desk because I've been using whichever one I'm working on on my desk and it just works out it like i put my pen there my headphones and my edc there and i just look at it while i'm working <laughs> you gotta see i bet you but that's my ethos like what you just said that's my yeah. ethos right now it might change in the future but right now that's what i think i bet you if you found if you made enough of them at a time you could find some shop or whatever to you know use a cnc and just mill them out for you yeah and That's like, true. you know, just you say, hey, make these pretty, you give it to them and then you come back in a little bit and they're done. Because it would take them no time at all to buzz that. Yeah, just with a big old CNC or yeah. even a small one. Yeah, and you wouldn't need anything big or powerful because it's just wood. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I agree though. Like I'm the same way. If there's something I don't like making, I just don't make it anymore. Yeah. It's like it's not worth it it's like yeah yeah like i said right now that's my ethos so i think i'm gonna move on and maybe figure out a different design mm -hmm. uh, the design looks badass and i do like it yeah but especially when i can find a, a a piece of wood that has a lot of character in it uh, and then when you work it down you're like holy crap that's gonna look cool <laughs> i hear you there i i know the feeling and then it's like you're telling you like this is beautiful but then if it takes too long, like uh, grinding the persuaders, that gigantic pry bar I had actually took forever. Like it took me about a half hour to do each one. Yeah, I would so, have thought, like, yeah. Yeah, so like it was like the same thing. I'm like, oh, these are sweet. I love it. And I'm like, I don't want to do any more of these. <laughs> you don't make them anymore? <laughs> no, I mean, I still have some. I've actually, um, I found a, the shop who, who sharpened my uh, index knife when I first did it. Mm -hmm. They, uh, she's, it's like an artisan sharpener. So they have, uh, they have some grinders. So I, I actually had them, I did some of them, but they did most of them. They ground the, the edge on oh, okay. the titanium executives because these were taking me forever too. And I was like, I just don't have time. So I was going to probably have them help me with that too. It's uh, this place, you know, about a half hour away, really cool shop. Hmm. That's cool that you found somebody like yeah. that. I guess I have to start doing yeah, things like that as well eventually. But for yeah. right now, I just, I want to make things that I want to make. Like, uh, I'm going to show you something. I think you'll like this. Oh. So you don't, you don't smoke cigars, right? It's been a while. Yeah, I like cigars, but I do like maybe, I light up two or maybe three cigars a year. Yeah. Um, but I made an ashtray and it looks like Ooh. an old iPod. So this thing isn't attached yet. Uh, it's just a stainless steel insert. Yeah. And I was trying to uh, put it together with uh, my black epoxy because I was doing that, um, that, that knot over there. So I just poured it on here and I was like, oh, we'll glue it together. Uh, resin isn't glue. <laughs> so it didn't work out. So what I'm going to do is uh, contact cement. And I'm also going to do stainless steel screws, not to hold it together, but to uh, just for the look of like yeah. a more like uh, industrial look. And then oh, I, awesome. I, I routed this part out uh, for to, to hold your cigar. And then I gave it some bad, badass 45 chamfered edges. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I can see it. Those are sweet. 
Dude, that's that. awesome. So, like, how that, long does that take you? So, this one, watch. Um, I don't know. Let's see. So, I had to cut it to size. That was probably a minute. Mm, routing out the shape. Mm, five. And then for this, another, I don't know, like 20 minutes okay. but to this point. To this yeah. point, be 20 minutes. Then glue it and screw it. Then give it the finish, another 10. So 30 minutes by the time it's done. Yeah, it's not too bad. Conservatively. And it's going to be like a one of one. Yeah. Uh, because they don't make, uh, this is roasted oak. This is kind of like the thing you showed me, the photo you showed me. Yeah. But instead of them varnishing the oak, they put it in a big oven. They take out all the oxygen out of the oven and then they burn the oak. Ooh. And it does two things, three things. It dries it, it stabilizes it, and it makes it way stronger just because of the, the cellular uh, structure changes a little bit. It just makes it a little bit stronger. Um, so that's what gives it this badass color. And it also smells like a cigar already. So it is going to be a one-of-one one product, and I'm really excited about building it and making it and, and, you know, finding it a home. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, like, that, that's going to be a one-of-one. One. Uh, you know, I'm not going to measure it either for, like, future ones. Like, if somebody wants one, it's going to be whatever uh, dimension the next piece comes in. On, you know. Yeah, you just kind of, yeah, figure it out as you go. Yeah. So I wish I had more like CNC stuff so I could just like try like a one off and make this cool random thing. Yeah. Just like if I'm going to make something I'm like I'm going to have to, you know, have some guy make at least 50 of them for it to make wow. sense. So yeah, it's like I one of these days I'll get a CNC and it'll be <laughs> or just grind it out or yeah, something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, and that's kind of what I started going with with uh, the like laser cut or water cut blanks and then, you know, doing the grinding and stuff. Yeah. So that, that like you can, yeah, you can do that, but maybe you'll get a water jet. I don't know. There's always uh, something. <laughs> you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I'm really excited about like little stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's so cool. You know, I found that piece of roasted oak at Woodworker Source and, and I was like, what's this? And the guy talked to me about it and he was really excited about this piece of wood too. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'll take it and I'll take all that too. <laughs> oh man yeah dude you should make a wood hank holder i bet you could make a killer looking one i should make a, a hank holder i should write that down somewhere yeah that would be awesome so you could layer the wood somehow and it'd like just you'd have like, like, yeah, character pegs to yeah a lot of people are doing like uh what do you call it rescued wood or what do you call it salvaged wood like like a barn gets torn down so you take yeah the like a bowling uh, like a bowling alley floor or whatever oh that that'd be so cool bowling alley floor hank holder that's it that's it you're done now they make like uh they make all kinds of stuff like countertops and stuff i i forget what they yeah. call it but people are doing that because of the price of wood are so freaking high so like yeah. even woodworker source for example they'll they'll go and salvage a floor somewhere and like you know sell it at their store Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the most wood I've ever purchased was, you know, a couple two by fours here and there at like Home Depot. So, dude, two by fours are ridiculous right now. They're like six bucks a piece for an eight footer. What are they normally? The, $2.55, $3. Oh, Crazy. Yeah. They're twice the price. Well, because everyone's you know? building stuff. Everyone's like, well, kind of home, not doing anything. You know, I'm going to finish my basement. Yeah. That sounds good. So now I understand why so many people are building stuff out of freaking pallets. <laughs> they can't afford the wood. <laughs> well, actually, no, because uh, before it, right before the winter, it was still in the whole COVID mist. We, um, our mailbox kind of just fell over. So we, uh, we went to go get a new one and I wanted to get, I think it's a four by four, like the mm -hmm. post to like, you know, put in the ground. I couldn't find it anywhere. I went to like four different stores because the wood, it was the wood shortage. I think yeah. it was the, it was explaining me well, because like the, they have to have half the people at the factories and stuff. Yeah, it's like the pressure treater that did the wood. Like those places were closed or partially open and all this stuff. Yeah, I just used some concrete and a big steel post. You know, it worked, but yeah, it probably works better. Yeah, I mean, wood probably 
didn't look cool enough, but I posted yeah. it. Was, it was covered by some, like, you know. You could have done two, two by fours, you know. Just take a couple, screw them together, problem solved. Yeah, you just glue them and screw them together. Yeah. Fill the hole. You reason the screw, fill the hole. That would have worked. I wouldn't have done that, but it would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not find a four by four? That's insane yeah, to me. Like Menards, Home Depot, like all the Lowe's, like every wood place I could think of around me. You couldn't find a two, four by four. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, this is probably like six months ago, but yeah. Yeah, I want to build a like a woodworking bench. And I've been holding off on, on buying all the wood for it because uh, I'm like, maybe they'll come down in price after the COVID <laughs> thing. I don't know. <laughs> Because six dollars a, a two by four, and I need a ton of them. Yeah, I need I need twenty of them maybe. So it'd be over a hundred dollars. Yeah, in two by fours. Yeah, check Wait, us out. We're at the podcast talking about two by fours, man. That's <laughs> that's hilarious. Welcome to the EDC podcast. Where we Welcome talk about to Carl's EDC <laughs> podcast where we talk about two by fours and mailbox posts and mailbox posts. This and ashtray the- I'm really excited about though. Yeah, like so- I almost don't want to sell it, but I have to. You know, but it's like you you made it to sell it, dude. You needs to be in the wild. <laughs> Somebody needs to be enjoying it out there. You smoke two cigars a year. Yeah. You can't own something this nice for two cigars a year. A dedicated cigar ash. A real cigar guy needs to own this. I'm yeah. making myself one too, uh, uh, out of uh, a a piece of juniper. So me and my boss and a buddy of mine sometimes go to this cabin and work on it. And sometimes we go out and like go hunting for wood, you know, like pieces yeah. that fell over. And, and juniper is, is, is a beautiful wood. It burns really nice. But anyway, I grabbed the piece, brought it home and I'm making an ashtray out of it. And like a live edge ashtray with some black epoxy. It's going to be cool. Not this cool. It cool in a different way. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I like this one better. Um, but the other one has like a little bit of sentimental value. Like if I never go back to that cabin, I have a piece of it with me. You know uh, I mean? That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I can, I can hear you there. Yeah. But I, I, I'm a romantic sometimes. I, I like your idea though. It's like, cool. It's like, Hey, I'm going to make this thing. It's super one off. You know, I'll sell it. Hey, I'm going to make this other thing. Super one off. <laughs> you know, like, What's he going to make next? And then you make like, I want that one. Like that's, a, that's an awesome idea. Yeah, and some people with my hands, I, I can't make as many as you can. I'm not a robot like you. I'm a human being. <laughs> you and can't just sit there for a couple hours and just make squares all day? No, I can't. <laughs> I, re- I literally can't. Uh, I can't. I, I, I tried this weekend, for example. I tried making, like, more of them. Yeah. And I was out there making Japanese sawhorses for no fucking reason. <laughs> well, because you didn't have to make Hanks when you made the sawhorses. That's why that's why yeah. and i was using hand tools too like a dumbass <laughs> <laughs> like you got power tools man you're a construction worker with power tools you're not a 17th century you know amish guy with the, the, the hand the drill forest. that you have to go by hand i i use some power tools but <laughs> yeah no that's funny that's i actually crazy. find like i it, you know like to sew hanks for like an hour is kind of like relaxing almost i can probably do an hour yeah, but I can't make I I still I can't make I can't make as many as you. I'm I'm not a robot. I, I'm like a, a well. I've too- seen you. I've seen you. You're like oh, you made this many. I'm like, it takes me a week to make those motherfucker. <laughs> With bull, bull, max, bull. There's That's no way you bullshit. made all those in that half hour between when you posted I started and when you were finished. Bullshit. <laughs> and uh, what what was my point? My point was some people want like an old design I had that I sold out of. I made six of them or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, uh, I can't. <laughs> there, I have, I have, I have 10 different designs that I haven't made and I'm not buying any more fabric until I'm done with at least five of those. And that's going to be months from now. And by then I'm going to forget the <laughs> design you want. Okay, I'm, that, that one's not coming back. Assume yeah. That my hanks are like one-time things, okay? Exactly. Just assume that because I don't want to go back either. Like I made that design, I'm uh, and I have one personally, so I don't need to make any more. <laughs> when, when I first started, I actually I like every hank design I made. I tried to always keep them in stock, 
So like, I'd buy like a yard of fabric, you know, you get like 20 ish hanks or whatever out of it. And I'd be like, yeah, I'd go through that. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go get another yard. And then I have to get a yard of this one and become like, became really stressful because like, you know, oh, they're sold out of this one that I need to get. Oh, I need to get more of this one. So yeah, I'm the same way now. I'm like, I'm going to make something. And if it sells out, awesome. I might yeah. make it again, but probably not. No, yeah. um, I don't, I don't, unless I feel compelled to like, I, I, I made one that I tried keeping one and then my body bought it off my hands, like in real life, IRL. It's he's like, 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 I want to support your business. Show me what you got. And I show him my designs. He's like, I don't like any of them. I like that one. I'm like, that one's mine. My personal <laughs> one. It's been in my pocket. He's like, ah, dude, that's the one I want. Are you sure you can't sell it to me? I'm like, fuck. Okay, take it. I haven't blown my nose or anything. It's just been in my pocket for half a day. Sure, like take it. Sweat off your face and give I it haven't to done him. anything with anything. So he, he bought it. I'm like, and I tried to move on. And then somebody posted a sick ass photo of the Hank. And I'm like, I have to make more. <laughs> Dude, I have so many. It, it's become a problem. Do you keep one of every one you make? No, I, I, I don't want to because I don't, that's not the spirit. That's yeah. not that ethos. The ethos is I make something I like for people. Yeah. And if I if I happen to own one for some reason, that's cool because then you take pictures, you kind of advertise, you know? Yeah, exactly. I used but, to do that. Like, but I know I don't. Yeah, 20, I would keep one of each. And I'm like, I have 20 Hanks. I was like, I don't, probably don't need this many right now. And then like, I'd always want like, like it's like every like five to 10, I'll make one that I really like and I do keep. So I was like, yeah, no, I, I can't keep one of every. It's There's too many. Yeah. I do have to make a hand holder now because I have to hold my collection somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You need to make it. It's like, it's going to be cool. It's going to be like mahogany. You're going to show it. And then I'm going to have to get one from you. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I'm excited about the pen holder, especially <laughs> if I can get some a piece of wood where I can get resin in that would show. Fuck. I'm excited. Oh. That'd be really cool. Can't you like force a hole in it? Like you drill. You it? can, but I like that that nature same. thing. That, yeah. Like filling up a, a knot. Like that knot was there, and and I didn't try to hide it. I I'm yeah. trying to like show it more. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. No, that's. Okay. I, I've been really happy making stuff. Um, it's probably the happiest I've been in a long time. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you were like, because we've talked about it. You're like, oh, I kind of want to make something. And yeah, like, we did. Make I mean, summer. that's what birthed this. Yeah, exactly. This, my YouTube birthed the podcast, which birthed me making stuff, which birthed Beltran Co. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. And give it like, you know, like it's like, you know, a year from now. And then you're like this big shot. And you got like an arsenal of people making stuff for you. And you're like, that routing sucks. Your stitches are garbage. <laughs> No, <laughs> dude, I'm like the nicest guy. Uh, I remember having an employee that looked at me super weird. When one day he's like, you know, no one's talking to me like that. I'm like, what do you mean? He was Mexican talking to me in Spanish. He's like, you always say please and thank you. <laughs> and dude, I almost cried. Like nobody had talked to this man That's nicely. Horrible in his life because you know he's a late he was a laborer working yeah. for me for you know a summer or whatever and when he said that like it hurt like i was like ah oh, dude like more people need to be fucking nice around here it doesn't matter who you're talking to or what you're yeah, at, he's, like, he, he was so confused that i was nice <laughs> like hey could you do this for me please not like yeah that's yeah in sense because uh you know i was the the the, the supervisor and that for that job and mm -hmm. like if you don't want to do it or like whatever like you don't feel comfortable doing it yeah. i'm gonna get it done you know like that's my that's my ethos when i'm working yeah you know and and if if that if, if you don't happen to be a good fit too like i'm not gonna hire you either <laughs> you know <laughs> like that <laughs> but you know if for some reason you're like oh i don't know thanks i don't want to do that part <laughs> you know i'll do it yeah but yeah i'm glad you're liking the the maker mindset and mentality of everything yeah yeah i i, I want to make I, and i don't want to make just tanks though you know that's why i started making wood stuff yeah um hanks are cool 
but Hanks I don't want to be a Hank maker. Yeah. I want Hanks to be part of the brand. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I went with like Gondek UDC. It was like, you can, I can make whatever the heck I want to make. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but like Beltran Co. is the company and then B Hanks is the umbrella and they have B Trace and you know that sounds complicated that's like businesses i know i know i know i know LLC has an llc and yeah this one's an s corp but like this one yeah that's that is complicated i guess yeah mm. we have because i actually thought about that because my wife has her little side business and i got my little side business and we're like do we make like gondek inc like the parent company of it and we're like no that just <laughs> work. i do I, I like complicated. Yeah. But I guess Simple. branding is difficult. Because if I make stickers, is it B Hank stickers and then on the bottom says buy Beltranco or like Yeah, yeah. See, like you just do like one company that does it all, then it's very it's easy. It's consistent. You don't have to buy 17 different stickers. Like it's a cost savings, it's a win-win. I do have to buy stickers though. Yeah. Stickers are like it's like you have to do it. It's like a like if you ship EDC gear and you don't give a sticker, even though probably eighty to ninety percent just get thrown out. Like yeah. it's just like against the rules. Dude, you should see my stack of stickers, dude. It's big. Oh, I want to like, get like a, like, like a this big of like your stickers or stickers you just no, kind of like just hired. stickers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any more stickers for my 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 yeah. stickers. I have one, and I'm gonna raffle it. With, along with some Hanks. I want to do like a St. Patrick's Day like thing. So I want to do like two raffles and a giveaway. Oh, nice. Um, I don't know. Just I need to get people celebrating. Like yeah. Christmas was so dull this year, man. Not at my house, but like in like in general. Yeah. Christmas was dull. And like New Year's was dull. Like I want people celebrating and getting drunk and like shaking hands. Well, not shaking hands, but you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. I mean yeah new yeah. year's tw- when i was 23 in new year's i spent in vegas man everybody was hugging and and kissing and, and getting drunk and like just partying it up and like thousands of people in this one street and to me that that was like a, a great like human moment yeah i remember somebody proposed to somebody i congratulated him and hugged him but i actually hugged some random guy he was like oh i didn't get engaged it was him and i was like oh shit and i hugged the other person too like it was Vegas. You're all drunk and happy. I, I hear you. Man. Just give it that six weeks until you know your uh, daughter comes, and you'll be like me, and you go to bed at ten o'clock on New Year's Eve. That's what you're all about. <laughs> no matter uh, when you stay up, they always get up at the same time. That's funny. I can't wait. I'm I'm super excited. I'm super happy. No, that's really cool. Fine, man. I, I'm so excited. I have loved. I was I was loving your uh, pushing the green theme though on Instagram. I'm trying- gonna I'm gonna push it to the moon. I'm, yeah. We're gonna launch it to the moon. We're gonna green St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and I'm gonna Cinco de Mayo. All of it. We're gonna. I'm gonna. I don't know. I'm just trying to get people like yeah happy like, about something. I like St. Patrick's Day. My mom, who probably listens to every single one of these, is uh, she used to she would dye my milk green on uh, St. Patrick's Day every year. Like you'd wake up, like you'd have breakfast, and like you got like green cereal with like a side of green milk. That's lovely. Yeah. Uh, my thing is, I like the McDonald's Shamrock Shake. Oh yeah. I have one every year. You only have you have one, and it's one like every year. I look. I like my food, <laughs> but I'm not gonna spend a thousand calories on a shake. Okay. Mm. You know, it's one yeah. time a year. I think I'll be fine. Yeah. Like I just got done eating a bunch of Buffalo Wild Wings wings. Oh, dude, but I those that- that's. That's dinner, you know. Yeah, mine, mine was lunch, but yeah, it was uh, it was fifteen boneless wings. It was a health healthy amount. That's a lot of wings. Yeah, I got Nashville ran or Nashville hot. Oh, delicious! I like the mango habanero. Oh, that's that's ugh. it's good. Like I can have a couple of those, but it, those yeah. those are spicy. Well, I do blazing for fun. Yeah, that's psychopath. It's no right. ranch. Oh, I man. yeah, if it's lunch. I just feel a little danger. I get, I get, I get six blazing. Oh, that's, that's just sounds horrible. Like, I like spicy. Like, the, again, the mango habanero, okay. But yeah, anything beyond, even the mango habanero, like, they're pushing it for me. Yeah, it, they're, they're spicy. 
Yeah. The blazing is almost too spicy to get any flavor. Yeah, it's just like pure burn, right? Uh, there's a lot of flavors in there. I like it. My mouth is watering. <laughs> I can't even think of wings. I'm still full from lunch. What time is it out there right now? It is 9.30. Oh, okay. So you're an hour ahead. That's, yeah. that's dope. I'm excited for your knife. Um, I've been excited for you as a whole. I mean, you do you do such great things and Thank you're you. super nice, man. I, I you know just making what I like, and if other people like it too, that's super cool. And if other people don't, then you know I got a couple backups. You know. That's kind of- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you still got your nine to five too. I mean, like it's not, uh, yeah, exactly, know. exactly. It's not like. God, I have to sell 10 pry bars this week. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to eat, which, you know, I, I can appreciate the people who are in that situation. And, you know, it's definitely tougher, but it's nice having it as just a little side gig because it's like, you know, hey, you maybe get a little extra spending money, just make something fun, you know, see, just see what happens. Yeah, I haven't gotten there. Like everything goes back to some sort of tool or fabric or something. Yeah, like, it goes back into it. Well, you gotta, you gotta take like, take like 10 bucks out and like, just buy yourself get <laughs> a steak from your profits, from your Hank. And you're like, my side biz bought this. And then like, yeah, you just like, that'd be dope. Yeah. That would be dope. But I need a table saw right now. <laughs> so that's you not really happening. Need a table saw. Huh? You really I need, need a table saw. Yeah. Uh, I was borrowing my, my dad's, uh, oh, exactly. and he needed it back for this job. Selfish asshole. <laughs> i was like yeah I'll, I'll bring it to you asshole no, I'm just i love my dad I, I i actually worked at that job with him uh after work i would drive by and and i'd help him out and some stuff and uh, yeah it was awesome. it's super fun working with my dad and i was still i was telling him about bitcoin i'm like hey bitcoin just hit fifty thousand. and he's like remember when i told you i was gonna buy five grand five years ago and i was like <laughs> i shouldn't have said anything <laughs> He's like, I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, five grand wouldn't have, it, it would have been, I made the math, it would have been like 70K today. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, cause I remember I got into it when it was like around a thousand. Hmm. And I like, I bought a coin? Huh? Yeah. What? Yeah, but I didn't buy, I didn't buy a ton of it. I would buy some, I probably made a few grand off of like cryptocurrency in general throughout yeah. the years. But like, yeah, I was never, I'm too, safe to uh to go like just in and like wait for it to just keep climbing and hope for the best like i'm like oh cool i doubled my money sell oh ah, okay yeah, so that's like, probably what my dad would have done anyway yeah it's like you know yeah he wouldn't have stayed five years so. yeah it's like oh man i made 10 grand that's awesome you know what? i'm gonna hold off to see if i make 70 you know it's like, <laughs> 10 grand. this is awesome and you sell it yeah 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 well but now like apple's in it tesla's in it Square, PayPal. Oh yeah, well, yeah, uh, like the, a like, few banks. What not makes sense, you know? It's like screw you, Visa. We're gonna figure this out on our own. Yeah, I think it's more like the the dollars is is you know inflation is gonna become so ridiculous. Yeah, that that they would rather have their green cash not be green cash, you know? Yeah, yeah. Screw you, fiat currency. I'll just yeah, yeah. do my own thing. Yeah, I think that's what it is mostly. Mm-hmm. But no, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it's a crazy idea that you can like have it and everyone's got the ledger and like, you know, you could go blow up this one building and like you, whatever, and all the hard drives are gone, but it doesn't matter because there's 800 backups all over the country, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. I had a, a full node way back in the day on a hard drive. Hmm. Was, I was, so you don't have, you're not holding anything right now. No, no, no. Voice. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to no. buy some. That's what I want to do. I want to put like, the, as soon as I get any profit, out of Beltranco. It's going to go straight into Bitcoin. Then you next that. thing you know, that's how I buy my CNC machine. Exactly. Exactly. Like, hey, you remember, Max, we were talking it was 50 and now it's 500,000? <laughs> yeah. Look at all this equipment I have. Look at, look at the CNC. <laughs> I have no idea how to use it. Come well, over. Let's well, build something together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. But no, yeah, that was, that was years ago. I think that was before my daughter was born. Well, you said Bitcoin was a grand. That was a long time ago. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
I know. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to put a grand in this crazy random thing. So, you know, you buy a couple hundred bucks here and it goes up and you kind of see what you do and you sell it. Yeah, it was, it was good. That's dope, though. Yeah, fun stuff. I think that's, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to buy in some, some of it. Let's do you it. Know. Yeah, go, go spend a little money you can lose on it. And worst case, you lose it. And best case, you make a little. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe 20 years from now, you pay your mortgage with it because that's all anyone uses because dollars are worthless, you know? Who knows? God, that's, it's scary, man. But, it, like, who knows? Yeah, exactly. It's, like, the future is scary, you know? I, I think that, I think the future becomes more important to you when you have, when you have a kid. Yeah. Uh, totally Before, true. it was like, it's just you. Whatever happens, I'll, not only will I survive, but I'll probably be happy like wow whatever in a van somewhere like i could yeah. it over a fire or something if i need to yeah that's yeah. fine kill bunnies for a living i don't know chicken fries and chocolate cereal and strawberries i was like if i don't find those three things they're gonna starve to death <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally totally agree with you yeah that's so funny but yeah. I, you know i didn't start thinking like that until like three months ago no, it's, it's, it's definitely weird, especially when you'll, you hold your daughter, like, like for the first time, you're like, whoa, like, this is all this kid has is like me and my wife, like, you know, you, you're responsible for life. It's, it's pretty intense, but awesome at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, last time I came out of a podcast with you, I was like, I oh, probably should make something. And now it's more specific. I need to make a pen holder and a hand holder. And I have to integrate some epoxy somewhere. You, you see, it's documented. You better not edit this out. Like, I want to make sure this is in there in the podcast. So, like, six months from now, I'll pull up the podcast. Dude, I'm excited because I'm, uh, you know, after I'm done with your tray and, and my other friend that I can't name because yeah. this might release before I'm done with the tray. Um, I think I'm going to stop making it. Uh, yeah. the trace i think i'll start making one of ones of like stuff like this mm -hmm. i really like this it looks like an old school ipod it does i kind of miss it with the old click wheel yeah that you'd spin i don't miss it at all i never liked ipods i remember i got the video freshman year of college and i was watching slightly ashamed to say this but gray's anatomy on it like in my bunk like on this like you know one by two inch screen yeah. And you probably thought you were in the future. You probably thought like, you were the, the baddest matrix motherfucker on the planet. Exactly. That's dope. Well, I think we're gonna call this an episode. I'll I'll take it, man. So I'll like message you in like a couple months and then I'll be busy, but then you'll be busy and then I'll be busy again. We should do a one a month thing. What everybody who comes in the podcast is always like, we should do this like once a month. I'm like, we should do this once a month. And we never do it. Get, we should try to get one more in before your daughter's born. Let's try that. Because once once that happens, it's all yeah, all chaos. So I, I really want to take we want to take like at least a week off of work when she's born. Oh, I don't know dude. that I can afford it, but I'm gonna if try. You can, it. If you I'm gonna I'm it. gonna I'm gonna go on Instagram and be like I'm taking custom orders <laughs> for that <laughs> one week because I'll be home, so I'll have time to make some custom orders. Yeah, because when you have a newborn, like all you have is time. I mean, it's so you don't have to do it. <laughs> No, 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 because I won't, you know, I won't be at work, you know? <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, yeah. For, like, a little bit. Yeah, you know, taking mm. care of your child and, like, feeding them. and They do sleep Well, they're not going to, she's not going to feed on me. Come on. <laughs> We're not there your technology was. <laughs> Someday we will, with, uh, what do you call that, uh, genetic modification, genetic uh, altering thing? GMO S human? No, no, no. Spice? No. What's it called? I'm not sure. Ah, I forget. But it alters your genetics. Maybe someday with like a quick, you know, reprogramming of your genes. Now you can like feed your baby even if you're the dad. You know? Nice. I'm glad I'm I'm done with kids. So <laughs> I don't deal with any of that. <laughs> I think I think we should go on off. And just call that the end. Yep, we're done right there. <laughs> Carlos, pleasure right as always, buddy. Right on, like God. Again. See ya. Bye.